My name is Marvin Soto, and I grew up in Tegucigalpa, Honduras. I first met Michael Miller in 1993, when I was eight years old. He came to Honduras as a Wheaton College student to work with kids who were living on the streets of Tegucigalpa. Michael Miller visited Honduras several times over the next few years and moved here in 1998. Yes, very good. Did you win the game? Yes. He was working with Casa Alianza, which had a ministry to his three kids. He saw a need and felt a call to help. We do some basic interference to try to help them to get off the drugs and to become stabilized enough to then move into one of the group homes. When he came in 1998, I lived at Casa Alianza group home and I had a dream for my future. I want to be somebody in life like a professional or maybe a soccer star. Then Hurricane Mitch hit and our Boy Scout troop along with Michael Miller and our home group leaders helped rescue communities of people who live along the river. Their homes were destroyed and Michael came alongside and saw a need. He found the leaders of the community and helped them assess the situation and dream about the future. Michael appealed to his church connections in San Luis, Houston, and Wheaton College and raised enough money to buy some property 20 minutes outside Tegucigalpa. A chance to build a, a healthy community, a, a dignified community, uh, one that's a, a much better place for the kids to grow up. In 1999, the first house was built and it was in its way to becoming a stable community once again. When we finally had this miracle of having enough money to buy land, the people felt like they could finally start doing for themselves. They're so happy to be able to be working for their futures. Then Michael saw another need. He had learned that the 13-year-olds at the group home, when we turned 14, would be considered old enough in Honduras to be on our own and to earn our own living. The group home was closing. Michael saw a need and felt a call to help. Michael Miller was 26 years old. God had given him a vision and a passion. He formed an organization, the MICA Project, Proyecto Miqueas, based on MICA 6-8. What Michael wanted to teach us, as well as what we were teaching him, he has shown you all men what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. In the year 2000, with the help of his church connections and friends, he bought a house and the MICA project was soon filled with 12 young men. Our group home leader, Roger Figueroa, came with us. Michael began a homeschool program and discipleship classes. His education degree from Wheaton and his experience with charter school in Houston enabled him to see our potential as future Christian leaders. He helped us dream about a future. Fast forward to the next 10 years, of bump and bruises, of hurts and healings, of lessons and learning. Michael encouraged others to reach out, to help start a ministry at the garbage dump, to help build a church at Villalina Miller, to help our families and friends with food, homes, training, and education. The ministry expands. The first Micah boys became high school graduates, and we moved to the leadership house now called the Timothy House. Michael taught us how to dream about the future. And as the first dozen or so grew up, there were more younger kids who needed help. Help to kick an addiction to yellow glue. Help to come off the streets out of hard home situations. A technical school began to help train not only the Micah guys, but also those in the neighborhood. They offer Bible studies to gang members. In 2011, Micah is family to so many, from 10-year-old first graders to college graduates. There are 14 at the Micah house, 12 at the Timothy house, 21 graduate from high school, 13 are in college, and five are college graduates and working. Marvin Alexi Soto. We celebrate. And now Michael Miller sees another need. The Micah House neighborhood has become a crime zone. Five murders in 10 months within four blocks. 
drugs and alcohol are sold on the sidewalk just outside the door of the Mica house. For young boys in rehab, it is not a safe place. And Michael Miller has another vision. There's some property next to Via Linda Miller, where Michael dreams of a new Mica house, where the boys can live and learn, run and play, be part of the community next door, and get training at the technical school. Michael envisions the current Mica house to continue to be a beacon of light in the neighborhood, perhaps a crisis center for kids addicted to yellow glue, a place of training for women, and outreach to the community. Hundreds of supporters have come to visit the Mica project and fallen in love with what God can do in lives that once looked hopeless. We hope that MICA supporting churches and friends can help with the purchase of the new property. Our technical school will help with the construction. If you have been to Honduras or know someone who has or have followed the story of the MICA project, we ask you to help us with another dream for the future. There are hundreds of youth and adults whose lives have been touched by the MICA project. We're asking you to pray, to give, to dream with us. Thanks.